would have selected the rutabagas, but they didn't look fresh. Millie, dear, please. As a good shopper, I make it a point to know fresh from stale in the rutabaga department. Really? When? <laughs> I don't believe it. Why, she's 40 if she's a day. How can she lie like that? No, no. No! Roxy said that Phyllis said that Paris said that Harriet was not going to go through with it. But I heard from Mr. Raoul at the hairdresser today that Clarice does not know her elbow from a hole in the ground or something. No, I wasn't there. Uh-uh. I wasn't invited, wouldn't you know? Is that right? Well, if I wasn't invited and you weren't invited, you know it couldn't have been much of a pep rally. Yeah, I better, too. Bill will be home any minute. Okay, Millie. Talk to you. Dear. How did you get here? The number six bus, like always. I didn't mean that. I meant, how did you get in this room? I didn't hear you. Well, I came in. You were on the telephone. I didn't want to bother you. All I know is that I saw that owl of yours getting ready to take off to wherever it is that owls take off to, and then, and then you pop up like Dr. Jekyll. Uh, Mr. Hyde. Whoever. And scared me out of about ten years' growth. Oh, my heart sounds like Mongo Santa Maria. I don't believe it. I mean, a grown man with a hobby like that stuffing furry little beast. Now, now, what kind of a thing is that for a person to do, I ask you? I enjoy it. Well, maybe you do, but I don't. This whole apartment absolutely stinks of formaldehyde. There are feathers all over the place. Oh, and this morning, this morning I opened up your underwear drawer, and there were two little green glass things peeking out of your box of shorts. Oh, good, you found my squirrel eyes. <laughs> it's not good. All I ever see is your back hunched over some work table. Why can't we ever laugh and be gay like other couples? Are you listening to me? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Sounds like Ozzy and Harriet in here. Yes, it does, dear. Will you listen to me? Now, that's better, Mr. Self-Hypnosis. I'm listening. What is it? What do you want? All I want is just once for you to address me in some form of meaningful dialogue, person to person. Eve, how are you? I'm so glad you asked. Today was a disaster. First thing this morning, Billy ate a whole box of chocolate covered prunes and spent the rest of the day, guess where? <laughs> and I got a ticket from a policeman for jaywalking. Can you imagine jaywalking? I was absolutely safe crossing in the middle of the block, except for the truck. <laughs> oh, and I've been meaning to ask you, do you want that blue suit of yours to go to the cleaners? Because I am positive that there's still some confetti left in the pocket from about two New Year's Eves ago. And it's really filthy. Oh, and another thing. What kind of glue was that that you bought to fix that souvenir ashtray that you got in San Diego? I need some of that because I dropped a plate today and, boy, I almost cut my foot off. Oh, and the sparkling's caught. The sparkling's caught. They want to know if we can come over week after next to meet their son-in-law. And I said, okay, but I'd have to check with you first. Because I didn't know whether or not you might want to mount a monkey. Or stuff a seagull. Or anesthetize an armadillo. You come out of there, Bill. I can see you. You can't escape in there. Now, come out. Oh, uh, yes, dear. That sounds fine. <laughs> what sounds fine? All of that. Bill, did you really hear all of that? Eve, I heard it, but I wasn't listening. You what? Yeah, that's it. I hear you, but I just don't listen. It's beginning to bother me. Bothers you. It is driving me up the wall. I think we should try to do something about it. Maybe even get some outside help. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. What do you think I've been yelling about? Maybe we need a marriage counselor. Oh, no. Oh, no. There is nothing a counselor can tell me that I don't already know. I talk, and you don't listen, and that's the problem. Yes, I think we need counseling. <laughs> Having spake, he returneth to whence he came, back to his private world of skin and bone. <laughs> hey, it's like living with a zombie. <laughs> Hello in there. I have to go over and see my father, so we'll have to adjourn our summit conference for now. <laughs> I left a sandwich on the counter for your supper.
just like you, Dad. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think that if I didn't come over here twice a week, you would just sit there, work on those planes, and never eat at all. Oh, boy, what a day. <laughs> Billy ate a whole box of chocolate-covered prunes, and did I tell you this? I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm sure I did. Oh, no, I remember I told Bill. Anyway, Billy ate a whole box of chocolate-covered prunes, and then I got a ticket for jaywalking, and then to top it all off, I had a big fight with Bill. Hi, Mother. William, you knew I was coming. The least you could have done was to have waited at the curb to help me in the house because of my condition. What condition? A condition. When a doctor tells you you have a condition, you don't argue. After all, doctors know what they're talking about. Otherwise, why would they be doctors? He told me I have bursitis. It's that place in the shoulder where the bones meet, you know? William, are you listening to me? <laughs> Dad, are you listening to me? Of course I'm listening, Eve. Bill, will you give me just 10 seconds of your undivided attention? Of course. Good. Now listen. I spoke to my father tonight about our problems. He was of no help. I spoke to my mother, too. Do you Don't know interrupt, please. Even though it does mean that you're responding to me. Now, on the way home, I figured it all out. We don't need to get any outside help. We can solve this thing by ourselves and very simply, too. We should try to change the way we relate to each other. We should try to change the way that we... What did you say? I've been thinking, too, Eve. If I really listen to you, and if you really say something, and if we really pay attention to each other, then things might be the way they were when we first met, remember? Oh, do I remember. You used to listen to every word I said. Oh, you had such a soft voice. You used to laugh at my jokes, too. That's what I mean, see? I see, I see. You're listening. And you're starting to be worth listening to. <laughs> We're <laughs> relating! <laughs> oh, that's terrific. I've got an idea. Uh-huh. We'll light some candles, yeah. drink a little wine, oh, yeah. sit on the couch, and... Uh-huh. Relate. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's a start. Here's to the new us. Long may it wave. Oh, good, good. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm listening. Say something. Oh, well, I didn't think we were just going to talk and listen. I thought maybe we'd just... Yes, hear. yes, good, good. Those words are good. I hear you. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to know there's nothing wrong with your hearing. Yes, coming in clear as a bell. But I haven't said anything yet. Anything worth listening to, I mean. Loud and clear. Go on. Oh. Oh. Okay, uh, did I tell you what happened to me today? Well, now, what kind of a day was it? It was a day like any other day, except I was there. Now, first thing this morning, Billy got a ticket for jaywalking. <laughs> and then later on in the day, my father ate a whole box of chocolate-covered prunes and... Oh, no, that isn't right. I... I seem to have mentioned this before, but not quite in that order. <laughs> and later on in the day, on my way to the cleaners, I ran into a little old lady and I broke her sternum. <laughs> she threatened to sue me until I told her that I had a husband who could hypnotize himself whenever he heard my voice. <laughs> and she said, well, I never heard of such a thing. And I said, well, you have now, old lady. Of course, dear. <laughs> You are impossible. How's that? You, you hit an old lady with your sternum. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. That's it. We tried. You might just as well go back to stuffing your old owl because I'm going to bed. If that is another delivery of pheasant feathers, it's not for me. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Hello, Mike. Where's Eve? I think she's getting ready for bed. Well, good night. Well, wait a second. I just got here. I got some terrific news for you. Now, at this time of night? Well, yeah, sure. What's wrong? Wrong? What could be wrong? Well, I know something's wrong, pal. I didn't take half a semester of psychology without getting sensitive to what's happening with people. <laughs> Especially my own brother. Well, Eve and I are having a little problem. Oh? What kind of problem? Well, she claims that I never pay any attention to her, and I'm unhappy because she's always shouting at me. That's your classic blank-out-loud noise syndrome. <laughs> we studied about that in school. Listen, don't pay any attention to him, because he's a robot. Home from the office, move to the work table. Never listen, mount a beast, go to bed. 
And on weekends, it's TV. Wow, this is terrific. And what, she asked, thinking better of it, is so terrific. You're both perfect examples of the Klein-Kitzinger paternal-maternal blending generation manifestation. Of course. Sure. Well, don't you see? No. no. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can make it clear to you. Bill, tell me about your mother. Well, you know her as well as I do for crying out loud. She's your mother, too. <laughs> Stay with me for a minute. Tell me what mother does, how she acts, what she says. Oh, well, let me see. I never really thought about it. I, I guess she talks a lot, but I don't know what she's saying most of the time. You know, sometimes I think I may be going deaf. Did you ever think that maybe there's nothing wrong with your hearing? Huh? Maybe people aren't saying anything that interests you. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. See? He does that to me all the time. Yeah, just like your father. Exactly. So don't you see? See what? Eve, you married a guy who's just like your father. Bill, you married a girl just like mother. It's classic. Yeah, it's nonsense. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Yeah, well, Klein and Kitzinger did an exhaustive study proving that it does. Now what? Oh, my gosh, I forgot. I came over to tell you some great news. I'm engaged. Oh, wonderful. And, and, and I brought Harriet over to meet you. She's been waiting in the car all this time. She's going to kill me. Hi there. You must be Eve and Bill. I'm Harriet. I would have been here sooner, but Mike forgot all about me as usual and left me sitting in the car. Honestly, he never listens to one word I say. I wanted to come in when he came in, but he said, oh, no, he wanted to come in. And I said, well, I can come in with you and talk to you.